you have a child with pans and pandas and you just want to know, will they ever get better? Well, this is an important episode that you need to listen to. We're continuing our conversation about pans and pandas. We're going to talk about what are the barriers? And we're going to talk about some pans, pandas, success stories, because when you have a child with pans and pandas, like I do, you need to hear about success stories because man, this is a scary ride that often (laughs) a lot of people get out of the car. Um, when you take this ride, meaning you often don't have support. So let's talk about the barriers to pans and pandas recovery. So if you didn't listen to pans and pandas treatment, go back and listen or watch that. But there are definitely barriers to pans and pandas recovery. Some of it is just access to uh, proper support finances. This is an incredibly expensive disease because you are um, really going down rabbit holes unless you get proper guidance, which means you take a lot of missteps. And that's just not a financial hit. That is an absolutely traumatic and emotional hit because you just want proper care for your child. And it seems to be really hard to find, even though we're getting better care. So The other barriers are the nervous system is incredibly activated. That to me and improper detoxification, when people land on my door and they work with me one-on-one, those tend to be the biggest barriers, especially if they've gotten decent care. And People do eventually find the right providers. Again, there are more providers. I know I'm training providers. um, But what happens in the nervous system? Why is it that the nervous system is really like the linchpin to getting better? So the science tells us, right, about healing. There's actually a field of study called psychoimmunology. And psychoimmunology says that once our nervous system is stress activated, we've gone from a parasympathetic to a sympathetic dominant state. The brain the body, all its resources are going to go to try to find this unknown stressor. And when it's looking, right, the, the immune system goes over there, the neurotransmitters go over there, your hormones go over there. It leaves its regular job sort of like, you know, by itself. And so that unknown stressor, all those, you know, the, the, your nervous system being activated, You just don't have those resources. And how easy is it to get an activated nervous system in pans and pandas, right? There's always, you know, neurocognitive and neuropsychiatric, you know, components in the brain, very stressful and traumatic at home. Um, And the nervous system moves from that nice, relaxed, parasympathetic to sympathetic dominant and often goes into that elevated fight, flight, or freeze, fight, flight, or freeze over and over. And you're just not going to be rational. So even if you're, you're doing your best, you're getting great treatment, right? your body is not going to give permission to heal itself. And I I think that's an aha moment for most of the parents that come to me. The other big part of this, right, is that many people don't get proper detoxification help. So even though we have more providers treating pans and pandas, they're more often treating, you know, um, more traditionally or just adding in herbs and some of the things. And detoxification is much more complex. And if you're not looking at what are your genetic markers, do you have MTHFR? Do you have other things that are interfering with the detox process, right? Or maybe you uh, can't utilize certain nutrients that are required in the detox process. So you don't have MTHFR, but you have another mutation where, you know, you, you can't utilize certain vitamins. These things happen all the time. Um, I love looking at um, genetics and looking at those variants because they tend to be, you know, remiss. They tend to be problematic, right? I would tell everybody I'm MTHFR single mutation. And I have to watch my detoxification all the time. Um, if I have a glass of wine, I literally have to take a detox pack in order to, to have it. So it means that I don't typically do that. But how do our kids have so many toxins around them? Well, you know, if you're around carpeting, if you're around plastics, which we are, 
we have a lot of toxins in our environment, way more than when we grew up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, that these kids that just have a tremendous amount of toxins around them. And they're more sensitive because once you have inflammation, nothing works the same. So we have to get those inflammation, that inflammation down. And that tends to be the, those tend to be the biggest barriers. And then parents really not having the right tools just feeds the stress, right? Of course. Right. And, and please, you know, like give yourself forgiveness. Nobody is equipped for having an incredibly dysregulated kid, regardless of where that's coming from. You need professional guidance, right? So how do we heal the pan's panda's brain? So number one, we have to get it to calm down and regulate. And that's why so many people do PEMF with me. And I have a special device just for infections and toxins. It's amazing. Um, I recently had somebody who is a um, had a sudden onset with tick-borne illness and had psychosis, like almost immediate psychosis. And they got their, you know, P our com P E M F device. And the mom messaged me and was like, literally on day one, he's noticing a difference. And I'm so happy because he's run out of hope and he was a young adult. So, you know, it's in important to fill your hope cup and calm your nervous system, right? So calming the nervous system, how do you do that? This is part of the success story, right? So it can be brain-based tools like neurofeedback, biofeedback, PEMF, um, do meditation. Let's never forget breath work. It is the number one quickest way to regulate a dysregulated nervous system. But you got to do it a bunch of times. Um, I love talking about somatic therapy. So whatever it is, there needs to be a consistency, which isn't easy. Their pans, pandas, people, um, but it has to happen, right? So that is imp is critical as well as that detoxification, which is a whole other conversation. And I have it in my book. It's going to be okay. But let's talk about some pans, pandas success stories, and because. I, again, have the privilege of having worked with, I don't know how many people with infectious disease. It's definitely thousands of people. And I don't believe everybody with mental health issue has issues have hands and pandas, but I just happen to have a huge amount of people who come in for a QEG brain map and you can see it on a brain map. Um, and then you work with a, you know, provider, you do supplements, you do dietary changes, anti-inflammatory changes, and you get better. So I have so many success stories, but one of my favorite success stories is a family where there were multiple kids with pans and pandas. And they had seen me speak at a conference about eight years before they came to me and said, you know, we didn't understand how important calming the brain was. So we went and did all these different types of mental health treatments from psychiatric medications. Um, they also did um, all your traditional pans, pandas treatments. And they they had three kids affected. One actually resolved really pretty quickly. Um, the second, it took some time, but was able to resolve and really was left with some kind of focus ADD components. But the third, who was actually the least sort of pans like in terms of he wasn't, he was more of an internalizer. So he didn't have all those extreme behaviors, um, but he struggled to recover the most and actually went into a deep depression where he was literally on a couch um, as a late teen for about a year. Um, and so his mom was like, "We, you're always on my bucket list. I'm bringing him in first because he's so depressed and I'm worried. So in a short amount of time, Within three months, he was completely off his couch. He got a job um, and he was like one of the most compliant um, young adults I'd ever worked with. Forget about young adults, anybody I'd ever worked with. And I remember talking to him and saying like, you're amazing. You did like everything that, you know, I asked you to do. And he said, well, because I felt better pretty quick. And I'm not messing around, Dr. Rowe. Like you told me what to do. And I had spent all these years and doing what other people told me to do. And I felt like garbage. And so it felt great. So this is a number of years ago. He's just been amazing. He wound up getting um, 
at that first job, he wound up turning that into a career and he's pretty darn happy. And then of course I wound up treating um, the sibling who had focus problems that we were able to resolve um, and actually get to the bottom that there was some le learning problems as well and move and, and get support educationally for that. So I always like to share these stories because this was a family that was multiple people were affected. They had done a lot. They'd done some really great medical treatments, by the way, and had worked with top providers um, and didn't, and but yet couldn't resolve some of the, the attention problems, the learning problems, and, and the uh, mood issues. And despite having a variety of psychiatric medications, which really harmed him, as he likes to talk about, we were able to turn things around and he's had long-term success. So just know what are the things that you need to do to stay forward. So one, put your oxygen mask on, take care of yourself, find an aligned provider who is going to help you strategically map out what the treatment looks like. And Everybody who is successful when when I work with them, you know, what do they what do they look like, right? So of course they're always nervous and fearful, some of them when they come in, but they are hopeful. They um believe that their child can get better. We, you know, hope and belief are really important. I did a whole episode on that. And they have some sense of faith, right? And I think those are important parts coupled with actually doing the work, right? And being consistent because this isn't easy and nobody says it is, but when we're consistent and we work on regulating the nervous system, addressing micro behaviors, because we've got to take, you know, big weight, little waves, make big waves. We've got to take those baby steps. And most of the time people are coming to me after months or years of this. And so there's going to be a lot of collateral damage, including trauma. So successful cases take the time and unfortunately have to have that patience or fortunately do have the patience um, and embrace the lifestyle changes. Like I say all the time, there are many things I would have never, ever done if PANS hadn't brought it to my door and my life is better for some of those things, even though none of us wish we had it. So have patience, have faith, find aligned providers and do that work and regulate the nervous system. That is the magic. There's no magic wand, but it's multiple pieces. And I get to have the privilege of seeing people heal every day. And that can be you too.